Hi, I'm Gary Hamill, professor at the London Business School and director of the Management Lab. Welcome to my video blog, Gary Tells You Why. Today I want to talk about why resources, capital, distribution, technology, why resources don't matter as much as you might think. Let's start by just asking a question. What sort of organizations over the last decade or so have been creating the future? Is it the insurgents or the incumbents? The vanguard or the old guard? Obvious, isn't it? It's mostly upstarts, mostly newcomers. It's Netflix, not HBO. It's Tesla, not BMW. Amazon, not Walmart. Google, not Microsoft. Airbnb, not uh, Marriott. Uh, YouTube, not NBC. Uh, Salesforce, not SAP. Uber, not General Motors. And, and this is kind of so taken for granted now that if you live where I live in Silicon Valley, we just expect the incumbents to lose. We just expect that it'll be these newcomers, clean sheet of paper that invent the future. But in a way, this is really kind of odd because if you think about it, the incumbents had all the resources, right? They had big R&D budgets, they had global reach, they had millions of customers. And if resources are what really mattered, you'd expect that they would win, but often that's not the case. Now, of course, what you can argue is that these upstarts all had the advantage of today's digital infrastructure. So they're able to you know, build very, very scalable IT resources using the cloud. Uh, they can use algorithms rather than just like a lot of employees to do all the smart things that need to be done. Uh, they have app-enabled distribution. They exploit network economies. They use social media for marketing, contract, labor. They have close to zero variable costs. They can exploit kind of gaps in the regulatory regime. And it's all these things that allow new companies to grow at an extraordinary pace. An organization, a business like WeChat, to, to have hundreds of millions of customers literally in a few years. But interestingly, that digital infrastructure, that was available to everybody. So if you're asking why is it that the upstarts win, digital is only a small part of the story. A less important part of the story, I think, than some other things. Let me share a quote for a moment from Larry Page, co-founder of Google. It starts, I think, to point us in the right direction as we're starting to understand why resources don't matter so much. So here's, here's Larry Page, let, let me read this. How exciting is it to come to work each day if the best you can do is to trounce some other company that's doing roughly the same thing? That's why most companies decay over time. They tend to do approximately what they did before with a few minor changes. It's natural, Larry says, for people to want to work on things they know are, are not going to fail, but incremental improvement is guaranteed to be obsolete over time. You know, a couple of years back, I was watching images coming uh, from the Curiosity rover at the base of, of Mount Sharp on Mars, photos that human beings had never seen before. And I was thinking about the team at NASA that built the Curiosity rover, including this amazingly uh, wonderful uh, uh, propulsion system that lowered the rover down onto the surface of Mars. And I thought to myself, who are these guys benchmarking? And the obvious answer is like nobody. They had to invent a lot of this stuff from scratch. By contrast, I think a lot of, of, of business leaders, a lot of managers, they, they suffer from a kind of ADD, ambition deficit disorder, right? But before doing anything new, the first question they ask is, who's already tried this? Who's already done it? You know, where's the consultant we can call that has a manual that's already like done 10 of these implementations before? Those are great questions if you want to be a follower, but not if you want to be a leader. If you want to lead, you have to be willing to commit yourself heart and soul to goals that lie beyond the range of planning, beyond the, 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 the range of, of best practices. And admittedly, that can be a scary uh, thing to do. But I'd like to, to, to talk for a moment about why this is so important. And let, let me take you through a little thought experiment. So imagine two organizations, we're gonna be really boring, company A, company B, and what really differentiates them uh, is the, the ratio of aspiration to resources. They both work in the same industry, they're filled with smart people. The difference is in company A, it's an incumbent, it's been around for a while, rich company, 
And so its aspirations are relatively modest. Maybe we want to grow a little bit faster than the industry. We're happy if we grow our market share by one or two percent a year and, you know, grow our margins about the same rate. That would be great. And so not much gap between aspiration and resources. Company B is a startup. They're setting out to change the world. They want to turn this industry upside down, but they have pretty meager resources. It's a small team, not richly funded. So their ratio, rather than let's say 1.1 to one, their ratio is 10 to one. Now, let me ask you a question. Which of those companies is really gonna be innovative? Which is gonna change the rules of the game? You know, in most organizations, people very seldom talk about 10X goals. I love the fact that by contrast, Alphabet, the parent company of Google, has a captain of moonshots. Astro Teller, that's his name, a captain of moonshots. And he manages Google X, their laboratory for really bold projects, things like Waymo, uh, autonomous driving, Loon, uh, high altitude balloons delivering uh, Wi-Fi or, 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 or broadband service around the world, contact lenses that are smart and can read glucose levels and things like that. So does your organization have any equivalent in terms of, of truly, truly ambitious goals? You know, it's, it's really simple. If you want non-linear improvement in results, non-linear financial uh, uh, results, you have to start with non-linear goals where the only way you can achieve those goals is, is with non-linear innovation. Let me give you a, a little example. Uh, this one from India. A few decades ago, there was an Indian physician, Dr. Govindapa Venkata Swami was his name, and he had just retired from full-time medical practice, but he was passionate about solving the problem of unnecessary blindness in India. There are millions of people in India who become blind because of cataracts. They don't have the proper eye protection in the sun, they develop cataracts and become uh, therefore dependent on others. And so Dr. V, as he was called, said, how do we change this? And he realized, that in a relatively poor country, if you were going to cure blindness, you had to completely change the economics of cataract surgery. And to do that, he couldn't look at eye surgery in the US and Europe. He went instead and he studied McDonald's and asked, how do you bring the principles of kind of industrial scale food production to, to medicine? And the result was a whole lot of innovation so in the, the, the Aravind hospitals that Dr. V set up, you have uh, patients lined up on, on, on beds, shoulder to shoulder, equipment that moves from patient to patient. The uh, typical physician will work a 12 hour shift there and do 100 cataract surgeries. And they lowered the cost of cataract surgeries by about 95% from what you would find in the developed world and they get the same medical outcomes. In fact, it's, it's, it's so cost effective that if you can't pay for a cataract surgery, which is about $70, they'll do it for free and they still make money. The five Aravind hospitals across India do about 300,000 surgeries a year. Now, you don't get that kind of innovation unless you start with an amazingly aspirational goal. How do we cure unnecessary blindness? So I would ask you, can you stand up and start to challenge the incremental thinking in your organization? Can you challenge people to think more boldly, to really commit themselves to projects that have the chance to make a profound difference in the world? Because in the end, what matters is not resources, but resourcefulness. And resourcefulness is the product of ambition. My friends, life is simply too short to work on inconsequential problems. So aim higher and light the fires of innovation in your organization.